I'd like I, now like to introduce uh, Dr. Malcolm Astley. Dr. Astley received a Bachelor's of Art in English from Wesleyan University in 1967, a Master of Arts in Teaching from Harvard University in 1969, and a Doctor of Education in Human Development and Counseling from Boston University in 1982. He spent 37 years in public education as a teacher, counselor, assistant principal, and principal of K through five and K through eight, working in the public schools in the Boston area. He has written informal articles, one for children on thoughts and feelings that get in the way of learning, and another for educators, five kinds of learning. He and Lauren's mother, Mary Dunn, have spoken at over 75 high schools, religious centers, community centers, colleges, universities, and civic centers at the state and national level regarding the problem of violence, and particularly boys and men's violence against girls and women and against each other. His daughter, Lauren Dunn Astley, was murdered at the age of 18 by her former boyfriend on July 3rd, 2011. Her picture appears now on the screen behind us. Please welcome Dr. Malcolm Astley. Thank you, David, and good afternoon to you all. I'm so glad to join with you in this inspiring effort to reimagine boyhood and manhood as valuing kindness, respect, equity, compassion, and nonviolence. Quite a contrasting image to Jackson Katz's portrait of how our culture has come to groom boys and men to be cool, strong, dominant, and scary, and to avoid both losing and shame at all costs. I believe it was in significant part that that cultural grooming that led finally to my daughter's murder in July of 2011. It is hard but important to tell you or remind you that she was beaten, strangled, and slashed to death by her former boyfriend about two months after she had ended their intimate relationship and when she returned to see if he was all right. You can watch a documentary on her story in the matter of breakup violence with the hard title of Love to Death on the 48 Hours website. If you watch, I urge you to have someone supportive with you whom you trust and respect. All of that sparkle you can see in Lauren's images that appear behind me is gone now, a kind of sparkle similar to that in each person and in each of you. The unique sparkle which we hope you learn to treasure and build in yourself and also build in those around you. Her murder and the incarceration of her former boyfriend for life are horrible. But more horrible and more important is what Lauren's death represents as one instance of such murder of three to four girls and women every day in our country about 33 more in Massachusetts since Lauren died in 2011, 100,000 in our lifetimes in our country, the same number as that of the American soldiers who died in World War I. And also just what Lauren's harm means as a reminder of the far more numerous acts of lesser violence, but still great harm done by boys and men against girls and women. That does not mean that girls and women are not violent, and we need to address that problem too. But it is the boys and men who by far take the harm to a much harsher and far too often lethal level. In this still larger context, we eventually must also take on the even much larger matter of boys and men's violence against other boys and men. The two problems are not separate though each has its own particular twists as well. 
The real challenge is in building the capacity of the vast majority of boys and men and girls and women working together to act with courage on their disgust about the violence and to take steps safely to stand up to it. I note that we spent decades letting adults and our young in car collisions be maimed and killed in sailing through the air and colliding in turn at high speeds with glass, steel, and cement. At some point, only 20 years ago in Massachusetts, after 100 years with the problem, we woke up, said we can and ought to do better than this, responded with a relatively inexpensive solution of seat belts, and prevented many injuries and much pain and the loss of many thousands of lives, and we saved money, even if the seat belts drive us all a little crazy at times. The point is that we can change together in important ways once we decide to, as we have managed to do substantially with monarchy, slavery, women's right to vote, civil rights, sexual harassment in the workplace, special needs, and child abuse. So where do we go? How do we proceed to stand up to and diffuse the shame violence, loss, and pain, and pick up the Center for Disease Control's urging to veto violence, and the White House's recent call, it's on us. I think our path is best shaped by acknowledging it takes more courage to care. How so? Because if you're going to care, you're going to get hurt. All relationships end in breakups, divorce, or death. It takes real courage to accept that and work with that hard fact and still keep on caring. It's much easier to hide our fear of pain, loss, or shame and be cool, self-centered, and angry. And yes, breaking up is terribly painful, painful like perhaps no other human experience except for the death of a loved one. It is a kind of death of a loved one. It is one of the worst pains in life, and it's time for us all to acknowledge that and to stop being silent about it and to provide safe places for all of us to talk about these matters and also healthy grieving skills to mourn the many important such normal losses in life, terribly painful ones. And no, it's not about losing your value or your self-respect so that you let the pain and fear of aloneness and shame turn into doubt and anger, forget about what is important, and allow yourself to think it's okay to snap. It isn't. And then turn toward harming a former boyfriend or girlfriend or a former spouse or yourself. You were not dumped, painful as the loss may feel. The fit was simply not good for both of you, and it needs to be good for both people in an effective relationship. There should be no shame and no blame for a relationship's ending. No shame, no blame. You are precious. You are. Each of us is. That's what I believe the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was saying in his emphasis on the age of mutual respect. Together we can fix this problem of dating and breakup and man-on-man -man violence just as we have fixed so many other human problems in our culture involving harm, pain, and unfairness and help usher in the age of mutual respect to which Reverend King beckoned us and get to the roots of problems like Ferguson. Veto violence, it's on us. It takes more courage to care. No shame, no blame for the relationship's ending. As we say in reference to Lauren's sparkle and confidence, keep on sparkling, each of you in your own unique and special way. Keep on sparkling. Thank you.